Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church. My name is Ricky Sandiford, and we gather this day in the Fellowship Center. Uh, we've been having some work done in the sanctuary, uh, replacing uh, some lights that we had issues with, and so it's not available, and so we're blessed to be here in the Fellowship Center uh, where our contemporary worship uh, happens every week. And so we're here, and I welcome you. Uh, a couple of folks I'd really like to welcome. One is mothers. Uh, thank you, moms, for all, the, all that you do and for uh, women everywhere uh, who have been mothers to us. Uh, God bless you, uh, and we appreciate you so much. And also, if you're tuning in for the very first time uh, today online, thank you and welcome. Uh, we are happy that, that you are here worshiping with us. And so as we gather uh, for worship this day, uh, God is with us, and so let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. I invite you to join with me in our responsive call to worship. Uh, your words will be in bold. Let us join together. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. Though the way may be difficult, God will be with us. We need not fear or grow angry in our isolation. In the Lord, we will take refuge, for God is our strength. Come to the Lord, who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you. Amen.
Have you ever gotten mad? I mean, really angry? Like when your brother or sister got the best present. <sighs> or when your parents said, no video games today. <sighs> or when your best friend said, I don't wanna be your best friend anymore. When I blow into this balloon, it grows and grows and grows. And if I don't stop, it'll pop. Anger can grow in us. And if we don't stop it, well, let me tell you what happened to a couple of guys named Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's kids. Cain grew things and Abel took care of sheep. One day they brought gifts to God. God was pleased with Abel's gift, but he was not pleased with Cain's gift. This made Cain angry, very angry, angry at Abel. God asked Cain, why are you angry? If you do well, I'll be pleased with you. If you don't do well, then he proceeded to tell Cain that there were bad things out there lurking, just waiting to get us into trouble. Anger can get us into trouble. Well, Cain did not listen to God's warning. One day, Cain said to Abel, Abel, let's go out into the field. They did. Well, that anger must have been growing and growing and growing in Cain because when they were in the field, he killed Abel. Then he lied to God. He must have known that he had done something really wrong. When God asked him where Abel was, he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, God punished Cain. The ground that he grew things on was not gonna produce fruit or vegetables anymore. 
and he was sent away to wander the earth. But God promised to protect him still. I wonder what would have happened if Cain had stopped, taken a deep breath, and asked God to help him figure out why he was angry. Maybe the problem was with him, not with his brother Abel. This week, when we get angry, let's stop. Let's take a deep breath. Let's ask God to help us figure out why we're angry. And know God sends parents and friends to help him help us. And just when we do that, God will do something fantastic. God will help us to turn that anger into something good. Have a great week this week. I'll be thinking about you. Can't wait to see you soon. I invite you to join with me in our corporate prayer of confession. Please join me as the words uh, will be on your screen. Let us pray. Patient and forgiving God, we come to you in prayer this day. For many, this is a celebration of Mother's Day. For all that our mothers have given to us and taught us. But for some, these memories are too painful of those who could not parent, who left us afflicted, who left us too early or too suddenly, or who we simply lost so recently with wounds that are still raw and hearts that are still angry. Help us to not get lost in our anger. Remind us that your blessings are continuously poured out, especially to those who find themselves hurting this day. Gather us all under the wings of your love, just as a mother hen gathers her chicks. Shower us with your love and remind us of the goodness and love mothers can bring into our lives. Give us the confident faith that reaches beyond our own lives to help others. Forgive us when we sink into our own selfishness and pettiness, for it is in those times that we turn our back on you. Bring us back to you, to the awareness of your eternal love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hear now, my friends, these words of assurance. Even though we are often led to anger, bitterness, and frustration, God still absolutely loves and forgives us. Because of Jesus, there is a way back, a way back to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen.
Let's go to God in prayer. Wonderful, gracious, and almighty God, we are so blessed, for you are a God of unchanging love. Your steadfastness astounds us. Even when we turn away, you still reach out to us to draw us back to you. Thank you, God, for loving us in ways that we simply cannot understand. On this day, Lord, in, in the midst of this journey, in the midst of celebrating uh, the gift of mothers and recognizing that they are a blessing from you, we also, Lord, recognize that there are others who are struggling. They're struggling amid uh, this COVID-19 crisis. They feel isolated and alone. So I lift them up to you, Lord, for your blessing. Give us the wisdom, O oh God, to know how to reach out and to connect with your people. Lord, we pray for all of those on the front lines, all of our medical professionals, those uh, who are keeping our stores open and our grocery stores open and the shelves stocked, that we may go about our daily lives with as little disruption as possible. Thank you, God, for their sacrifice, for their willingness uh, to put others' lives ahead of their own. Help us, God, to be mindful of the ways that we uh, can be helpful during this time, to help others stay safe. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us this day. Here in this place, here in this church, what a gift, O oh God. For we have come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, your gift to us and to the world to reconcile your creation unto you. Thank you, God. I pray for those who are battling any sort of illness in their life. Pour out your healing touch upon them. Remember, Lord, those who have lost loved ones and people close to them. Bless them, Lord, during this time because it's difficult uh, to come together to, to say goodbye and to celebrate a life well lived. So, Lord, as we continue in worship this day, may your Holy Spirit bless us. May your Holy Spirit be upon Pastor Robert as he brings your word to us this day. Fill him, Lord, that he may speak the words that you have given to him. Open up our hearts and minds now, O oh God, that we give you praise and glory until we come again physically together to glorify and to honor you. We know, O oh Lord, that you are in our midst, as scattered as we may be. So we praise you, Lord, and we sing songs of praise to you and to your never-changing love. All these things, O oh God, we ask and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give my life an offering. 
As we continue in this time of worship, let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you for this opportunity to, to hear your word and to have you at work in our lives. God, help us to continue to hear you, continue to experience you, and to be changed by your Holy Spirit as we hear this word from you. God, hide me behind the power of your cross, that people would not hear me or see me, but that, God, they would hear the word and the attentions you have for their heart today. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So last week, Pastor Ricky got us started on a new sermon series that we're calling God Questions, where we are looking at the questions that God asks God's people. And we started off by going all the way back to the beginning, looking at the story of Adam and Eve and the fall of man. And looking at the question that God not only asked Adam and Eve, but the question God asks us regularly, and that's the question of, where are you? Today, we move just a little bit forward in the biblical timeline, uh, looking not at Adam and Eve, but at their first two sons, Cain and Abel. And one of the main motifs of their story, of their interaction in the fourth chapter of Genesis is that of anger. And it's interesting because if you start in Genesis 1 and you begin your journey up to this story, this is really the first time you see anger boiling up in a human being like this. You've seen shame. You've seen betrayal. You've seen disobedience. But we haven't seen anger like this before. And as I was thinking about that, it got me to thinking about where we find ourselves now. You know, over a month, for some people over two months, into a shelter-in-place order with people getting frustrated, some people getting angry. And if you go back, and I know the way that news works today, sometimes we forget about these things, but just not even a month ago, there was a story that came out of Ohio about a group of protesters that were right up against the glass windows and doors of a state office there in Ohio. And if you look at the faces and the eyes of these protesters that are gathering, gathering out of their frustration and their desire to return to some sense of normalcy, you look at their faces. It took me right back to Genesis 4, where all of a sudden you're seeing anger like you've never seen it before, this unprecedented anger. And I have to wonder, as I see story after story after story of anger, and frustration and bitterness. I have to wonder for all of us gathered around our tables in our living rooms and our cars, wherever it is that we are watching this, I have to wonder, have you found yourself angry lately? Have you found yourself frustrated? 
whether it's with something else going on with your life. Maybe it's the economy. Maybe it's your bank account. Maybe it's who you're at home with or who you're not at home with. Maybe it's just not getting to go to the places you want to go to. There's a lot of reasons to be angry today. So I have to ask you, have you found yourself angry lately? In the last week? In the last month? In the last couple of months? And if you have, I want you to take a moment to return to that space. Try to sit in that anger for a second and ask yourself, why are you angry? Because that's the question that we're going to hear from God today. Why are you angry? With that question in mind, let's go to the scripture. It comes from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Let's listen now for the word of God. The man Adam knew his wife Eve intimately. She became pregnant and gave birth to Cain and said, I have given life to a man with the Lord's help. She gave birth a second time to Cain's brother, Abel. Abel cared for the flocks, and Cain farmed the fertile land. Some time later, Cain presented an offering to the Lord from the land's crops, while Abel presented his flock's oldest offspring with their fat. The Lord looked favorably on Abel and his sacrifice, but did not look favorably on Cain and his sacrifice. Cain became very angry and looked resentful. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why do you look so resentful? If you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do the right thing, sin will be waiting at the door ready to strike. It will entice you, but you must rule over it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's guardian? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So yes, looking back in Genesis 4, we see not only the first real manifestation of human anger, but we see the first murder. Really, the, the first death in the Bible. And it's interesting how it develops, because if you start at the beginning of the chapter, it seems fairly innocuous. Adam and Eve have, they're not in the Garden of Eden anymore. They have become pregnant. They've had their first couple of boys. Things seem good. You even see that, you know, Cain is taking to taking care of the land while Abel is taking care of the livestock. It seems like everything is just fine. Nice, happy family. And then all of a sudden things get really dark, really fast. What should be an occasion for joy. This is one of the first acts of worship we really see in the Bible. Both Cain and Abel take their offerings to the Lord. And pay attention to what it says here. It says that sometime later, Cain presented an offering to the Lord from the land's crops. That's all it says about Cain's offering. Then it says, while Abel presented his flock's oldest offspring with their fat. Now pay attention, because that's going to be really important later, looking at the differences between their offerings. Now, they present their offerings. It says that God looks favorably upon the offering that Abel offers. But not that he dislikes it. It just says God did not look favorably on Cain's offering. And because of that, Cain becomes angry and resentful. And even after God talks to him, he still lures his brother Abel away from where they normally are. He invites him out to the field. Remind you, this is where Cain is more in his element, and he kills his brother Abel. So what we see here is that anger can be a very slippery slope for human beings. And I think if we go back in our own lives, whether it's anger we've dealt with recently, 
or anger that we've had at some point in our lives, we recognize as human beings, especially as, as adults, that anger can be a slippery slope. You can go from one minute laughing and having a good time with relatives around the table, and then one person says one thing, and the last couple of hours of laughs and love mean nothing, and people are burying their teeth, full of anger and resentment and bitterness. And if we're not careful, we say things we don't mean to say, we do things we don't mean to do, and we damage relationships we never meant to hurt because that's how anger often works and because anger works that way there's this tendency to to demonize the emotion to say well anger is always bad but i want us to be careful with that because anger isn't always bad if you go to the new testament there are moments where jesus gets angry if you read throughout the whole old testament god gets angry plenty of times so anger isn't always bad but there is a slippery slope to it. And I think that's why God tells Cain, you need to be careful. He said sin is going to be waiting at your door and it's going to entice you and it's going to be ready to pounce. But he gives a word, a good word for us to hear as we talk about anger. It says you must rule over it, it being sin. So how do we do that? I think if we examine the story, we get a better idea. See, this whole thing kicks off because of a gift. And there's a lot of value in a gift, especially a gift that you spend time thinking about. So imagine that you're about to go to a party, and there's a friend of yours going to the party also. And they say, oh, well, you know, I got Bob here this really great birthday present. You know, it took me a while. I had to order it a few weeks ago online so it would get here on time. But I got it, and I bought the special wrapping paper, and it's just, it's great. It's good to go. And you're like, I've got oh god i forgot to get bob a birthday present oh my god i've got to run out to the store real quick so you you run out to target you run out to walmart you know you just grab something that looks generic enough that you know he'll like you maybe not 100 percent sure he's gonna like it but it's probably gonna be fine so you you grab this gift you buy a little bag some tissue paper there at the store you stuff it together scribble your name on it scribble his name on it take it to the party and leave it on the table right now imagine that you hang around long enough that bob starts to open his gifts And you see him open your gift, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's that's nice. You know, thank you for the gift. I appreciate it. And then he gets to your friend's gift, that gift that took weeks to arrive in the mail, that gift that had special wrapping paper, maybe even took the time to do a little bit of calligraphy on the to and from, you know. And he, he opens it, and when he sees it, his eyes light up. And this smile spreads across his face, and maybe even some tears begin to well up in his eyes. And he looks at your friend and he says, I never thought anyone was going to get this for me. I can't believe you got me this gift. And he gets up and he goes over to your friend and he gives him the biggest hug. And all of a sudden, maybe there's just a tinge of resentment. You start thinking to yourself, well... I mean, if they ordered this gift weeks ago, why didn't they remind me to get him a gift then? Why'd they just remind me today? Or you think, God, what a show off. You know, why did he have to go over and above for Bob? It's not like Bob's anyone special. And maybe that resentment turns into bitterness, and that bitterness turns into anger, and that anger leads you to do something or say something to that friend of yours that maybe you never thought you would have said. This is exactly what happens to Cain and Abel. Remember, I told you to pay attention to their gifts. And so if you go and you look at Abel's gift, he took time. It's not just that he brought meat, you know, as an offering, which there's often jokes about that. You know, maybe God prefers a barbecue over a salad, you know. But that's not what happens here. It says Abel presented his flock's oldest offspring. So he took the time to find just the right livestock, just the right offspring. And not only did he offer that, but he made sure to bring the fat. And just a little bit of of context here, that's particularly then and in that time period, that was seen as the greatest offering you could give. You you gave the fat up and you you would burn it so that the fragrances and and all that would go up into the air. No, it sounds kind of gross for us today, but just imagine smelling a real good barbecue going. Okay, it's, it's nice. It's pleasing. So this is what Abel did. Cain, on the other hand, here's what it says about Cain. 
Cain presented an offering to the Lord from the land's crops. Doesn't say what kind of crops it was. Doesn't say if Cain went out and picked something, if he put it together in a special way, maybe, you know, organized it in such a way so it was this wonderful mixture of crops. You know, when someone gives you a salad, you don't just want a bunch of lettuce or a bunch of tomatoes. You want a mixture. You want something that takes time. Maybe where the person took the opportunity to think about how all the different flavors would pair together. But instead, no, it just says, Cain presented an offering to the Lord of the land's crops. See, Cain's gift, I believe, was not received as favorably to the Lord just because it was crops. I believe that God recognized the time and the effort and the energy that went into not just the gift itself, but the collection of the gift and the presentation of the gift. And mind you, in the midst of all that, it's not like God rejected the offering from Cain. It, he just didn't look favorably on Cain because of the gift. Yet even though when we heard that story earlier, we could think, well, I would never do that. Maybe we have, maybe we haven't. We might think the same thing about Cain. Why would Cain get that angry over something so silly? When's the last time, last time someone hurt your feelings? Whether it was purposeful or not, when's the last time someone hurt your feelings? You see, whenever our feelings get hurt, whenever we feel like we have not been received well by someone else, especially someone that we love and, and we admire, whose attention and approval we crave, it stings and it hurts. And sometimes when something hurts emotionally, that logical part of our brain does not work as well. We get overwhelmed, consumed with these emotions. And I think that's what happened to Cain. Because if there is one person that the firstborn son of Adam and Eve wants to please, wouldn't it be God? This is the God that walked in the garden with his parents. This is the God that we presume from what we read continued to have stories told about him continued to be worshipped by his parents. There was a relationship there. There was something tangible that Cain wanted to continue to have blossom and to grow. And when this happened, when you talk about a sibling rivalry, all of a sudden he got one up by his little brother, by the person he cares the most about. And it hurt, and it stung, and the overwhelming power of his resentment and his anger led him to kill his little brother. Friends, that's the power of sin. And that's why God says this to him. God looks at Cain. He sees Cain becoming angry. He sees his, his face begin twisting into resentment. And so he says to Cain, why are you angry? Why do you look so resentful? This is the opportunity for Cain to stop and pause and take stock in the relationship, not only with God, but with his little brother Abel. And then God doesn't just stop with the question. He gives him some advice. He says, if you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? See, God attaches those two things so well. There's acceptance and anger. When we're accepted, when we're loved, when we feel accepted and loved, anger seems to dissipate. But when those things are missing in our lives, when we feel like we are not heard, when we feel like we're not accepted, when we feel like we are not loved, it leads us to do irrational things. Maybe not killing our little brother, but saying horrendously terrible things on social media, saying awful, hurtful, painful things to a relative at a Thanksgiving, the Christmas table. Or maybe just deciding on a whim that you're going to sever a relationship with someone. Not with a nice, pleasant goodbye, but by just completely cutting off all ties. Anger makes us do crazy things. And so God tells Cain this. He, he can see it coming. He can anticipate what's going to happen. So he says, if you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do the right thing, if you continue to allow the anger and the bitterness rise up in you, God says, if you don't do the right thing, sin will be waiting at the door ready to strike. And this should mean something to Cain, you know. It's his parents 
who committed the first sin. It's his parents who introduced sin into the world. And so this should really mean something to Cain. And so God says, it's going to entice you. You're going to want to do it. You're going to want to allow those emotions to overwhelm you, to follow through with it. And it's going to feel good in the moment. But as I said earlier, God offers that final piece of wisdom. You must rule over it. You have the power. You have the capability to not act out on your anger, to allow it to overwhelm you and lead you down that slippery slope where you commit an act that you never thought you were capable of. Friends, that's the power of sin. That's why sometimes we say things and do things in the midst of our anger that we never thought we would do. But you see, there's nothing wrong with a person who's angry. We all get angry, sometimes over righteous things, but there is a problem with an angry person. See, there is nothing wrong with a person who is angry, someone who is temporarily upset by an injustice in the world, but there is a problem with someone who is an angry person, someone who walks around and stomps around and is so overcome with anger that they sever relationships, that they bully people, that they hurt people. That's where the problem comes from. You know, as I was reflecting on this text, something occurred to me about Cain. You know, it's really Cain's fault. It was his inability to think about this offering that led him to that place of resentment and anger that ultimately led to the death of his brother by his own hand. And so you see, when we refuse to accept personal responsibility for something we said, something we did, something we did or did not fully understand, when we refuse to accept personal responsibility, that often leads us to unwarranted anger and resentment. That's what God was trying to get Cain to realize. He says, if you do the right thing, won't you be accepted? If you do what's right, won't you know that you were loved and that you were welcome? So friends, I ask you, God asks all of us, why are you angry? Why do you look so resentful? And is that anger, that slippery slope of anger, leading you to a place, dark, terrible, awful place, that you never thought you'd go? Because if it is, as God says, you must rule over it. Return to God and know the love of God because he is there. He's always there waiting to welcome us back home. So don't be overcome. Don't be overwhelmed. But be still and know that God is there. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for your gift of wisdom, even going back to the earliest writings in Scripture these early, early stories. God, even then, you were trying to tell us of the power of sin. Even then, you were trying to give us a way out. And God, in due time, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, who gave us an even easier access to you, an even easier avenue of grace. So God, help us to know that grace. Help us to know that love. And help us, God, help us to be set free from our anger, from our resentment, from our bitterness, that we would not fall down that slippery slope and be overpowered by sin. But instead, God, let us be overwhelmed by grace, that by the power and by the love and by the mercy of Jesus Christ, we would indeed rule over the power of sin in our lives. God, we ask all this in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is reaching.
Friends, thank you so much for being with us this Sunday morning in your homes. It's always such a privilege, really just an honor, that you, you welcome us and welcome everyone that has been a part of what we're doing here in the church um, into your home. So thank you for doing that. Again, we want to extend our, our thanks to all the moms out there. Thank you for doing a job that often seems impossible, and yet you managed to do it. Thank you for being wonderful mothers to the children in your lives. And to those that are hurting today, we're sorry you're hurting, but know that God loves you, even in the midst of your hurt. Um, friends, one of the joys of being in the Fellowship Center today is that we're able to say that it's in this room that we've been able to see so much ministry happen in the midst of all the shelter-in-place orders, even as those orders come to an end and we continue to try navigating a new reality. The church has not stopped serving the ever-present reality of need. We have done more food pantries we have served more people in the last couple of weeks than we ever do in any couple of weeks there have been so many people hurting so many people in need 
that we've been partnering with groups that we hardly ever partner with. We've been reaching out to communities like South Texas College and helping their students out. We've been bringing in more and more volunteers because the need is so great. And we would not be able to respond to that need if it wasn't for your continued support of our ministries. And so for those that have been giving and continue to give, thank you so much for supporting the ministries of the church and the ongoing reality that we continue to serve into. And if you haven't had the opportunity to give and you would like to give uh, here in a minute, right about here, uh, you'll be seeing some information popping up about how you can do just that so that you can give from the comfort of your home or if you'd like to, you can always uh, mail in a, a check or you know, whatever's most comfortable for you to do. And of course, the office is open. For those that don't know, our office has been open during this time from 9 o'clock in the morning to 11.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, so that you know we can continue doing some of the, the essential business of the church. So if you would rather come and leave a gift in person, you're welcome to do that in the church office during those times. Friends, thank you so much again for being here. And I encourage you to hear these questions that God asks us. Not that God only asks people like Adam and Eve and people like Cain, but Questions like, where are you? How is it with your soul? Questions like we heard today, why are you angry? And are you really listening to the wisdom of God in the midst of our anger? And we encourage you next week to tune in because we are going to be hearing another story out of the Old Testament. That's the story of the calling of Moses and the questions, really the question that God asked Moses pretty early on. So join us next week as we continue going through this sermon series and God questions. God bless you all. Hope to see you soon.